Alrighty guys, we're back for Simic Poison, and this is a Duskmorn standard brew, and I'm Red Cat. Let's briefly go over the deck, then hop right into some ranked. We got all four venerated rot priest. One mana, one two with toxic one. Whenever a creature you control becomes the target of a spell, target opponent gets a poison counter. Beautiful, powerful card, as we well know. We're going to try to copy the rot priest with cards like Mockingbird. We got a couple of those in. But we also got a new one here, Silent Hall Creeper. Two mana, one, one, can't be blocked. When it deals combat damage to a player, you get to choose one that hasn't been chosen. You can put two plus one plus one counters on Silent Hall Creeper or draw a card, okay. Or Silent Hall Creeper becomes a copy of another target creature you control. Beautiful stuff. Hopefully it does a thing today. So what other creatures do we have packed in? Well, we have all four Branch Blight Stalkers. This is a two mana three one with Toxic two. And uh, that's it. <laughs> we got three Ivy Gleeful Spell Thief as well. So two mana two one legendary creature. It has flying. And whenever a player casts a spell that targets only a single creature other than Ivy, you may copy that spell. The copy targets Ivy. Of course, we know that this works really well with uh, the Rot Priest style builds, but also I think Ivy is going to be a little bit of an MVP because we have been seeing a lot of enchantment builds floating about, so it'll be pretty fun to copy like the opponent's auras and whatnot. All right, so what kind of cards do we have that target in here to work well with the Rot Priest? Well, of course, we got some protection. We got all four tie bar stand because hexproof and indestructible really does come in handy. But then also, you never know if you're having trouble getting the poison through when that uh, plus X plus X is going to come in handy, especially if you're copying it onto the IV as well. Uh, we have more protection with all four royal treatments. That should do the thing. We have ways to help our creatures get through with Enter the Enigma. This is a one mana sorcery speed. Target creature can't be blocked this turn. Cool. And then draw a card so it replaces itself. So not only does it target our creatures, but we can make it so like our rot priest can't be blocked so we can get toxic through that way too. And it also replaces itself. Really like it. We have a combat research packed in too. It's just a little aura that enchants a creature. Enchanted creature has whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. As long as enchanted creature is a legendary, it gets plus one plus one and has ward one as well. Yeah, hopefully this one of is actually worth it. We have all four uh, aspirants ascent as well. This is a one mana instant speed until end of turn. Target creature gets plus one plus three and gains flying and toxic one. Beautiful stuff. Look at this even split in the mana base, guys. Six forests, six islands. We do have all four sanctums in here. We have all four coasts as well as a Mirax. We don't actually have an even split, but it's close enough. And we're actually just leaning a little bit blue. So it's fine to actually have that even split, uh, leaning it back towards the green, especially when we're going to have to keep green sources open for our protection spells. Honorable mentions, guys. A bunch of important honorable mentions, I would say. Uh, shore up is a card I thought about, of course. Uh, removal. <laughs> Removal's important. Uh, hard hitting question is a card I thought about. Trash the town. Yep. Uh, Fae flight is a pretty cool one to think about. Infectious bite. Like I said, removal's a little bit important. Oko the ringleader could have been a cool uh, top end as well as uh, Leyline of Resonance. I didn't want to go this route. Of course, if we go the Resonance route, we're going to want to go like full teamer colors or something. Wanted to keep it simple with just a Simic. Oh, guys, yeah, speaking of removal, there's some cards I skipped here. The removal that we're opting for is actually Tempo Removal, all four Serum Snares. Return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. If that permanent had mana value three or less, you proliferate. Honestly, the fact that it says non-land permanent is probably going to come in handy too when we do see a lot of, like, temporary lockdowns and stuff. Of course, the opponent could just play the temporary lockdowns after the fact, but still, it's something to consider. Um, and then also another card I missed actually, Invasion of Ikoria, kind of acting as like a fifth Rot Priest. It's going to be a three mana to grab the Rot Priest from the build, but still, uh, I think it should do the thing. Okay, guys, kind of all over the place. Uh, hopefully I did well enough going over it, but I do my dandiest to save the more in-depth discussion for the end of the video. So always look forward to that. In the meantime, let's go ahead and take it into some ranked and see how we do. All right, we'll see if we can get right into that first game in the meantime. What am I expecting from the build? <laughs> I'm expecting a little bit, man. I think it's actually going to be pretty decent. 
Uh, but we'll see, we'll see. You never know sometimes. Oh, oh no. No creatures. <laughs> no creatures in the opening hand. We should mulligan, for sure. We have a hall creeper, but that's it. Uh, it's probably pretty bad. But we'll keep it, see, see what happens. I especially like that we already have the mana we need for a little while. Uh, I'd say going first here is pretty important. We'll see if Hall Creeper can survive the turn. Because if it does, we'll have protection open. And then we can start drawing and stuff. Oh, buddy. Oculus already in the grave. They go ahead and grab a moment of truth there. Okay, another royal treatment should be fine and dandy. You guys thinking drawing? I'm thinking drawing here. Like, yeah, the extra counters for next turn, too, since we have no real way to push poison. I'm going to go for the draw, though. I think that's important. Oh, nice. That was worth it. That was definitely worth it. All right. Protection open for the Hall Creepers. I don't know if we're going to need the protection because they're probably going to go for reanimation this turn. Oh, moment of truth. Nice. Okay. Oh, that's good news for us. Well, no, they still have one open, actually, so it could still be helping hand. Helping hand. They're going to hit the Oculus. Okay. We don't have Serum Snare open, unfortunately, so they're going to get... They're going to get the Manifest Dread. Yeah, we're not going to take the time for the Serum Snare, especially when we want to proliferate the extra counters onto the Hall Creepers, probably. Oh, Ivy's pretty decent. Ivy's not bad. And I feel like we got some tough decisions over here as we're trying to be a poison build. Not really seeing it for the first game, huh? Let's get these plus one counters rolling. just keep the serum snare open with the uh royal treatment how do you guys feel about that if we do serum snare now there's no counter spell i guess serum snare now because we have seen a lot of counter spells in this ah tough decisions that proliferates really good on the hall creepers though holy cow um almost enough to put them on a clock However, I guess it does put them on a two-turn clock if we proliferate again next turn with the next Serum Snare, right before the swing. Moment of truth. I can only imagine there's going to be more reanimation here. Chart a course. I'll tell you what, if these Hall Creepers can keep up pace with this build, uh, helping hand the Hottie Gin. Okay. You got to remember that the Hottie Gin makes things cheaper, so this one mana is probably still pretty good here them nice this is perfect for us uh royal treatment also get to keep the roll around too so this is a lot of damage we're pushing through next turn guys um mirax okay i don't mind seeing it like um we could go ivy and then go Serum Snare, their Hottie Gen, copy the Serum Snare, proliferate twice. That could be pretty interesting. But we already have nine on the board. That seems pretty unnecessary, I would say. Um, oh no, opponent. The timer didn't even start, buddy. Yeah, they were probably feeling uh, pretty stuck themselves after these after these hall creepers got super dangerous all of a sudden, right? <laughs> that was cool. That showcased to the side of the build where if we miss our uh, rot priests, then it's still possible and oh, actually very possible to push through a lot of excess damage. Uh, so we had nine on the board here, right? I was probably going to go Serum Snare again while they're tapped out, bounce the Hottie Jin back. So uh, a couple extra, so 11 points of damage going through this turn. And then I was just going to keep Royal Treatment open instead of the Ivy. Uh, because, yeah, just having protection for our Hall Creepers after getting the opponent down that low is 
just huge. So we can kind of see why the opponent conceded them too. They probably just figured we had more protection. But still, I don't know. There, there could have been a way. We'd have to see the opponent's hand to really understand why they decided to drop there. Oh, wow. The hands have been really weird. Uh, is this... The opponent goes first. This should probably be a mulligan because if all we have is Hall Creeper and we play Hall Creeper on two and they remove it, like, that's just, like, that's just really, really bad. <laughs> Unless we draw more creatures, of course, which we should mulligan again. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, crap. Down to five? Let's do it. How often do I mulligan down to five? Not very. <gasps> the hands haven't changed at all. <laughs> it's, it's been like a very similar hand every single time. Okay, so we'll, we'll send an island for sure. We, ha we have protection this time, but not on tur turn two. If we want to like wait till turn three, no guarantee that we see our third mana again. Um... So it's something like this, right? I don't want to keep the third mana and then flood out this game or something. So Fable Passage from the opponent. Let's get that Sanctum down. If we do see the third mana, then we are seriously going to consider third turn Hall Creeper. Depends what colors the opponents are playing to, of course. Yeah, Mountain. Fable Passage grabbing Mountain. Oh, is it colors? I can imagine that there's going to be burn in the opponent's hand. See, no third mana. How long do we want to push it? We play Hall Creeper, gets burnt away like right away, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push it one turn, guys. I'm going to look. Going down to five was already risky. We might as well risk it. A little bit further here and see what happens uh and it might not even be a, a risky play because yeah hall creeper gets burnt away then we see mana off the top and we'd cry about it okay i'd rather keep hall creeper around over the ivy get a burn spell out of their hand get that ivy down see what happens to it yeah the hands have been weird uh trying to find that rot priest sometimes pretty difficult huh Torch the tower. Yeah, that would have been last turn on the Hall Creeper for sure. Fourth mana is a Fabled Passage. There's our third. Okay, awesome. So we'll see if we can actually keep this Hall Creeper around then. Uh, the opponent has enough mana where if they want to double down on removal, they certainly can. So we protect Hall Creeper with treatment, but on the stack they pop it anyways. That kind of thing. We'll see. And we'll see because a uh, certain burn here too, we can get around it with the Ascent. Which apparently, the toxic side of this build is hiding from us, guys. Okay, end turn. We're going to start with the draw on the Hall Creeper again, I would say. Even though the, the counters, well, two Serum Snares in hand. Maybe we should just go counters. Board Wipe would be a problem, too. Um, but if it's like Brotherhood's End, then the Ascent does help us get around that. Which is pretty nice. The Royal Treatment doesn't give Indestructible, which is definitely a problem. I think I think they know the, the concept here, and that's why they're thinking about this. <laughs> Bottomless Pool, return up to one target uh, creature to its owner's hand. Um, it's a, it's a tempo play. If we go Royal Treatment on the stack, I think they burn it away. I think they thought this through. I think that's what's going down here. We're going to let them have that tempo. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure they thought this through. And like, look, they still get like the room on the board. Eventually they can go for the locker room side of things, which is whatever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player draw card. Cool. All right, let's get that all creeper back down and keep protection open again. Yeah, letting, letting is it something have their tempo plays a little scary. 
Room deals four damage to target creature. Okay, well, this time we're going to have to try. We're going to have to try the protection. Okay, nice, nice. It was nothing else on the stack here, which is huge news for us. Getting to keep this Hall Creeper around is huge. Um, probably go right into the combat research. Try to restock this hand completely. A uh, Mockingbird's pretty good if we want to copy the Hall Creeper. So it could just be Is It Rooms, right? Let's go for combat research. Let's let's do a lot of card draw here. Oh, the counters could be really good too, though. Let's be real. Okay, first turn we'll go counters to try to help it uh, get around certain board wipes. A uh, Murex isn't bad. Tempted by the Mockingbird, guys. I really, really am. All right, I'll do it. I'll do it. I, I'm terrified of board wipes, but it hasn't happened yet for our one hall creeper, so that has to count for something. X is one, so that way we can copy the hall creeper. We have the ascent open to maybe help against like a brotherhood's end or something. Uh, bottomless pool. Oh, crap. They pay the ward one for sure. And they want to bounce the one that has our aura on it. Yep, it happens. Too bad we didn't have more protection in hand. Other words, that would have been insane. Four mana available. Bottomless pool. <laughs> crap, guys, crap. That first turn where I let them have tempo, I don't know if that was correct because this does seem to be just, is it rooms? Oh, Tyvar stand, nice. That'll come in handy, of course. What is that sound? Is that the Murex making that sound? What on earth? All right, let's get that Hall Creeper back down. Yeah, the uh, the bouncing back to hand. So going for the counters instead of the draw was a little bit detrimental. We still have to play around the board wipe, right? Even though it hasn't happened yet, we still have to, I think. We could go X is one on the Mockingbird, get like, you know, double Hall Creeper on the board. That would be really cool and all. But if we've been playing around it this long, like, even though it's is it rooms, look, they have torched the tower. It doesn't mean that they don't have other stuff in there outside of the rooms, right? I think we still have to play around it. Okay. It's an island. I don't mind seeing the uh, mana here because it's a lot to do on our turns, you know? It's going to be Scorching Dragon Fire. Three damage to target. Um... So let's go ahead, keep the Tyvar stand around and go for the Ascent here. Get the Toxic Ball rolling too. I don't know what that sound is, guys. Is that the Hall Creeper making that sound? Like what? What is that? Is that the rooms over here, maybe? Do you guys hear that? <laughs> All right, tempted by the card draw, of course, right? Uh, especially since... Okay, I'll go card draw. I'll go card draw this time. Yeah, more protection. Very nice. Dude, this, this sound is wild. I have no idea what it is. Tyvar's stand does protect against is it board wipes, so that's good news. GG opponent. Wow. Hey, I'll take the victories, man. They're very hard to come by, although I would appreciate actually playing these out. Uh, Hall Creeper has been an absolute MVP. It, like, there's a little bit of a decision to make. Like, between the counters and the card draw, both are, like, really good. So it really depends what you're trying to do at that moment in the game. Ah, uh, cool. But let's see the toxic side. <laughs> You know, it could actually be pretty fun to visit sometimes. Just like a uh, Simic Tempo that has a bunch of like unblockable creatures and stuff. That sounds interesting. Uh, Simic Tempo for protection, but I guess technically you could go like Mono Blue Tempo and still have a decent amount of protection spells and stuff, right? Okay, well, we have this Branch Blight Stalker. The opening hands have been bad, right? 
opponent goes first. No protection for the stalker. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> Let's try them all again. Let's see it. All right. Two creatures and invasion of Ikoria. I'm going to send the combat research easily here. Uh, let's keep the six. Combat research does work really well with the Ivy, though. Maybe we send the invasion. It's the furthest away. Keeping all three mana seems a little janky, too. Maybe I send Mirex. All right, I'll send the Mirex. I hope that's okay. We could have kept Mirex if we planned on a turn two Ivy no matter what, though. They go ahead, plot up Demonic Ruckus for their turn one. Swing a Challenger, keeping Ruckus back for next turn, probably. Enter the Enigma. All right, no protection in hand anyways. I think it's the Branch Blight Stalker for the turn. Whatever we play, we have to anticipate, like, one, sometimes you have to block really early against Mono Red. Uh, but two, certain Mono Reds are running a lot of burn spells as well, so easily could get shocked away. I'd rather the Stalker get shocked than the Spell Thief, but then if it doesn't get shocked away, we got Spell Thief, third mana, combat research on the Stalker, which copies onto the Spell Thief, which is actually really, really cool. Of course, we could wait. <laughs> I don't know if we'll have time to wait here. But we could also go Invasion of Ikoria to grab the uh, Rot Priest, which is hiding in the build, guys. Uh, oh, there is Rot Priest. <laughs> there you are. Okay, okay. Maybe it's a Rot Priest turn then. We could still go combat research as well if we want to go for card draw. We're getting to the point where we're definitely in danger. We could also just like play the spell thief for the turn. Just like get all of our creatures out there. Get the toxic ball rolling on the stalker. There's a good chance we die next turn too. If we don't have blockers down. Go for some card draw on the stalker. Go for the turn of setup, because at this point, it's all risky. Let's see what happens to our swing. Two poison getting through. <laughs> yeah, let's just take the turn for setup, guys. Uh, going down to 11. I think that there's a real possibility that we die next turn. I don't even think they want to shock our creatures if that's what's open right now. I think they just want to hit face. They go ahead and wait anyways. Uh, depending on how much mana they have in hand, some patience with your shocks are important when you have prowess creatures, so. Gonna be free demonic ruckus. I'll take that. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, you, you stay away from my uh, gleeful spell thief. Look at all this extra poison rolling through, though. That's good news. See, Rot Priest is what we've been missing these last, uh, uh, these other couple games, but still, it's doing pretty well. Uh, down to five, they don't use the Monstrous Rage, which would have, would have been an extra four. Oh, because they have lethal with the, uh, Callous Cell Sword. Ah, oh, man, that could have been cool. If we went first, I think that could have been a much different game, right? Dude, I, I think so, actually. Of course, if we went first, that would have changed the opponent's line of play a little bit as well. But with four poison, four poison on the opponent, three toxic total on our board right now. Enter Enigma could easily draw us more. Combat research. These are an extra uh, couple poison from the Rot Priest play as well. Hmm. If we saw mana, we could have went X is one on the invasion of Ikoria. Uh, played the mana. We could have uh, grabbed the Rot Priest from the build with the invasion and then played Enter the Enigma. That would have been an extra two. Is that, that still wouldn't have been enough, right? That would have been uh, nine total poison on the opponent. I'm trying to think if like, if we survived the turn, right? If we if they didn't have the Calisel Sword, would, have there, would there have been a way to actually win next turn? It really depends on what's on top. Man, I would love to see the top card, right? Because if we had three swinging through there up to seven... We had uh, Enter the Enigma, that's another one, up to eight. 
Uh, combat research, that's another one up to nine. And combat research would have been drawing us a card. And this also replaced itself too. Actually, I think there would have been a great chance of winning next turn, right? That seems good. I, let's see if we can get like an opening hand. That makes me a little bit more confident that I actually put the list together all right enough, right? <laughs> because the opening hands have been really bad. Or maybe I'm being too hard on the opening hands too, but I don't think so. Here we go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This this is fine. Uh, we don't have protection, but we finally have a turn one Rot Priest, which is very important. Opponent goes first, unfortunately, though. All right, let's keep this. Give it a shot. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear. Hey, Tyvar Stand. We could wait for turn two. I'm not going to. Not going to. We, we got to, like... We got to go, go, go. The, the same way that the opponent is going, we got to go. If we spend too much time... If we were up against something different, I might have... I might have decided to save the Rot Priest for turn two after we had the protection. But against the hero and everything. All right, it was Might of the Meek and no Monstrous Rage for the hero. <gasps> they do have a shock. Oh no, guys, our Rot Priest. I'm sad about it. Mockingbird. <laughs> All right, so. All right, let's do like uh serum snare is really good tempo against the heart fire hero we should probably get something established though right we might die next turn if we we don't keep the serum snare open all right guys it's a tempo turn yeah they could play third mana boost the hero twice and then throw the hero so we, we just need to keep the Serum Snare, unfortunately. And, like, that sounds like a lot that the opponent needs to have, but it, it just isn't, you know? It's just, it lines up a lot. Unfortunately, they didn't stack anything extra onto the hero before we were able to do this, but the good news is we have another Serum Snare, so if we need another turn of tempo, we'll have it. Ivy... With the hero going back down to a 1-1, one, one, we might be okay now to actually get something else down. The opponent is running shocks. I suppose... Well, I'll, I'll try the stalker this turn. I'll try it. Because if they shock our creature away, then at least... Or lightning strike, right? And at least that's a burn spell that's not hitting our face. I find a fourth mana, guys. Go for the swing. Not worth the block because there's too much in mono red that gives trample. Turn inside out. That does not give trample. But it does look like it's going to be a couple boosty boosts. All right. Do they throw it? Bringing us down to one. Oh, this is a great example. They do throw it. It's a great example here of um, why we kept that Serum Snare open a couple turns ago. Because we would have died because it had a couple extra counters on it too, right? Oh! I don't know what I was thinking there, guys. Of course we die. The uh, the hero's ability goes through as well. <laughs> how, many, how many times do I have to see the same combo for my brain to automatically math for me? I don't know. Apparently a lot. No, yeah, the uh, the hero was throwing as well. There, uh, after a couple boosts and a throw, it really didn't matter. So, no matter what, there, I had to keep the extra serum snare open again, right? That's crazy, dude. That's tough business. There, there's a reason people are getting annoyed by that, huh? All right, so that hand was better. The draws were okay. But I could have played that one much, much better as well. So I'd, I'd say blame that one on me. I should have kept the other Serum Snare open. If I would have had a little bit of a tempo play and we draw, drawn into more mana, then I think maybe we could still be in that match for a couple extra turns. Opponent goes first, unfortunately, guys. Oh, dear. Uh, let's keep this. This is not a bad one. Okay, Swamp. 
Yeah, big problem right now is a, a lot of early removal floating about because of those mono red lists, right? And then when you are up against the mono red, then then you also need that early removal too. But I don't know how often Serum Snare is actually going to help us pull through against uh, those extreme early aggro lists, you know? They do take the Serum Snare so we can't just bounce the bat and proliferate and stuff. Uh, I'm going to get the Branch Blight Stalker down. I don't know if any of our creatures are going to survive against Mono Black. Mono Black Discard does let your creatures survive sometimes, but if it's just like Mono Black Midrange or something, then uh, then sometimes, sometimes it's uh, four lands and then 50 removal spells and uh, four Deep Cavern Bats and two Shieldreds, and that's the whole list. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, uh, luckily the stalker gets to stick around. I'm very tempted by the invasion of Ikoria. Uh, the ivy could be really good too, because we go. No, 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 we don't have double blue on the board. Should probably just go invasion then. We do it before combat too. Which one would we rather they remove, though? I guess we'd rather they remove the Branch Blight Stalker over the Rot Priest. Nowhere to run. Oh, that's going to be a problem, dude. That that gets rid of all of our protection spells. All right, Invasion of Ikoria being our fifth Rot Priest coming in handy here. Let's search our library. There you are. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nowhere to run is like a huge problem for this list because um oh for so many reasons uh oh uh oh hey at least we get the poison ball rolling right tie bar stand that just doesn't matter does it let's do coast ivy we have tie bar stand open uh, but as you can see here, guys, uh, creatures your opponent's control can be targets of spells and abilities as though they didn't have hexproof. Word abilities of uh, those creatures don't trigger. Oh, luckily, Tyvar Stand does give indestructible. That is pretty good. Uh, however, these type of deck lists run Liliana too, and Sacrifice gets around all of it. So I'm tempted to save the Enter the Enigma for next turn, but we should probably do this anyways. <laughs> if we run right into a Liliana after we do this, then... Um, Oh, guys, I'm playing very awkwardly today. Uh, enter the Enigma replacing itself. Okay, okay, that that's fine, that's fine. I was thinking it was combat research. I apologize, guys. I don't know why I'm doing that. <laughs> I just have to know what I'm looking at here, I guess. So the minus three, minus three gets around the indestructible anyways, guys, so... But the Ascent, if we had another blue mana, would have actually helped the Ivy out beautifully there. Huh. I don't know how I feel about that. Number one, if I didn't play Enter the Enigma, it actually didn't change anything in that uh, circumstance. We're definitely in trouble. But I'm not convinced we're a hundred percent out of this until they get their bigger stuff on the board Haklazotes or something needs to drop before i say nail in the coffin ritual chamber that that's a start <laughs> that's a bigger thing i would say right Let's see what we see on the top. It is an Ascent, and that's a lot of mana, too. Six mana. Oh, guys, I almost forgot to go over it. While I have you here in the middle of the video, make sure you check out that description where we got that Discord link as well as that uh, Patreon link, too, if you're interested in supporting the channel that way. And then also, if you like the video, make sure you drop it a like. And if you enjoy the channel, then consider subscribing as well. It really does help out the channel, so thank you, thank you. Dude, we got some mono black demons. I like it. That's cool. I wonder if the room is the, or the ritual chamber is the only demon in the build. Probably not. I would assume they have some value demons packed in. 
Yeah, it's on me or X. Well, you know it'll be fun. Giving Toxic to their deep cavern bat. <laughs> we'll, let, we'll go ahead and let them swing on into. Here you go. And deep cavern bat. I, I don't know if you need this, but you also get flying. That'll help you, right? <laughs> There you go. And then for you as well. Look at this. We're even paying life to give some boosts to the opponent's creatures. Oh, this is target creature you control, unfortunately, for the Tyvar stand. Good game, opponent. Wow. That's tough. <laughs> Let's keep the ball rolling because we're 35 minutes in. I thoroughly believe in the deck list and uh, what it's capable of. Should be much, much more than what we're seeing. Opponents are going first, left, and right here. A uh, very aggressive side of the meta versus a uh, little bit more of a controlling side. That nowhere to run is super concerning for builds like this, man. So hopefully we get to go first in the last one. We'll see what we can pull off. Opponent goes first, and this has got to be a mulligan <laughs> Oh no, oh dear. Let's do Mulligan. Oh, there we go, there we go. Yes, okay. Um, Right, so one of the ascents is totally fine. With the opponents going first this much, I, I gotta, you know, I gotta call some bad luck here, right? I think so. It's pretty tough, man. We gotta go first more so we have uh, protection open before their turn two removal. I'm not even uh, not even playing around it, guys. We're going right into that turn one rock priest. Nice. Passing back to us is huge. Go for the swing. We we know what's about to happen to the rock priest. We know. Uh, that's what the Tyvar stand is for. Oh. Mockingbird's tempting. The Branch Blight Stalker is tempting. I'm gonna go Mockingbird. Uh, oh, uh, X is zero. And we get to keep the Tyvar stand open. Two Rock Priest on the board. Hmm, Sunken Citadel. Mana wouldn't be terrible. Another Rot Priest wouldn't be terrible, I guess, too. <laughs> um, okay. We'll start with that and then try the Ascent. At some point, the opponent's spot removal is going to be really bad for them. Swing. Let's do this. Triple Poison. GG opponent. Wow. I'm surprised by all the concedes on, on the games that's like leaning towards us. I'm really surprised that they don't like completely play it out. GG, man. That's what the deck list is supposed to do. And like just running it down and just not being cautious at all ended up working out in our favor. The, the biggest problem here is the opponents have been going first. So it's really hard to say, I need to take an extra turn for mana so I have protection open, you know? Uh, there's... There's a lot to talk about here. I'm going to go over the deck list right now. We're going to end on a high note because um, especially another victory after those first two is really hard to come by, wasn't it? Here's the deck list again, guys. Wow. The hands were really bad. Is it the is it the super jank aggro curve? Probably not. We see this curve work all the time. How much mana do we got? We got 21 mana. Kind of flooded sometimes, got stuck on two other times. You don't really want to get stuck on two in a list like this. You want to be able to go a two drop and still have something open on your turn three. I think 21 is right where we want it. I think that makes a lot of sense. Invasion of Ikoria, kind of cool as a one of. I like this. I like this. I'm not going to drop that, actually. Especially when Rot Priest likes to hide in the build, and it's very essential for the build. But you know what else was just like kind of very essential today this hall creeper a little bit of an mvp in the games that we saw hall creeper in right this is good i liked this a lot 
I, I'm keeping all four for sure. Uh, Branch Blight Stalker. Look, we need more creatures in the build. And there's not too many to choose from in Simic colors that make sense for what we're trying to do in this uh, deck list. So Branch Blight Stalker being Toxic 2 is actually... Toxic 2 is huge, right? Too toxic is a lot. But then you drop an Ascent on it and all of a sudden you're getting three through in the air, three Toxic, or Enter the Enigma. And now the Stalker can't be blocked. You're getting the Toxic through on the ground and you're replacing it, uh, replacing it with its card draw ability uh, maybe you had the rot priest on the board too it's like there's a lot going for this build there really is uh, something we didn't actually get to see today is any enchantment builds or aura builds where ivy could have been a little bit of an mvp i still like the three ivy of course uh, we saw combat research more than i was expecting and then there was that one game where i thought enter the enigma was combat research and i was like what 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 am i even doing at this point <laughs> like i I guess the art is a little similar. Not not really, but like, you know, they got they got like the main person on the art looking the same direction. <laughs> I guess, I guess, right? But not really, especially when the combat research is an aura too and enter the enigma is a sorcery. I just wasn't paying any attention there to be honest. I could see more Mockingbirds, but also if you only see Mockingbirds, then you're kind of like, well, I guess it's a 1-1 flyer. But uh, don't forget, you can copy your opponent's creatures with Mockingbird too. That's also, that could really come in handy. Uh, against Mono Red, guys, I think this list is really going to struggle. I don't really know what we could possibly do outside of just keeping Serum Snares open and try to out-tempo them that way. Because when you're trying to out-tempo Mono Red too, you also need stuff on the board that's doing something you can't just have the two mana and keep passing it back with the serum snare and then there's only four serum snares in here too uh, and then also there's like there's a variety of mono red lists and they all look a little bit similar but some of them don't run burn and some of them run all the burn uh, so it's really hard to decide like are my rot priests going to survive this turn i think usually we go up against mono red that actually has shock so i think i think playing around the shock is probably pretty vital so like all four of the Tyvar stand and the Royal Treatment seemed pretty important, I would say, overall. What did you guys think? Uh, Branch Blight Stalker. I got to go back to this one again. Like it makes a lot of sense for what the build's trying to do. Is there another creature we could trade in instead? I don't want it to be too expensive, right? If we go up here, if we go to like Toxic, right? And then we go to that. That is not how you spell Toxic. <laughs> there we go. There we go, guys. Uh, like, Bloated Contaminator is something to consider. It's a little bit too expensive, though, for what this deck list is trying to do, right? I think so. I think so. Although the Proliferate on the Contaminator also works really well with the Hall, uh, hall Creeper as well. So that could be cool. Uh, something else, too, like, Contaminator is a pretty good target to copy with the Hall Creeper. Like, if you're swinging in, you get the counters, and then you eventually copy Contaminator. Now you already have counters on the creeper which is now contaminator and then when this tramples through with those extra counters you're proliferating onto that as well uh, and then also getting more toxic through that way too so a uh, contaminator definitely something to consider probably should have made the honorable mentions at the very least right uh the one of mirax didn't do anything today unfortunately it's one of those things where if you do end up flooding out with with uh well the deck list <laughs> you end up flooding out then at the very least, maybe you'll have Mirax on the board and you can start generating those mites to push through like the last couple Toxic or something, right? Or the last couple Poison. Yeah. Hmm. Outside of that, are there any creatures that like uh, specify Poison outside of the Rot Priest? Poison Dart Frog. That's not the same thing. That That's not what we're looking for. So if we drop some of the Branch Blight Stalkers... And we, we could, like, maybe go up a couple Invasion of Ikoria. Again, we don't want too much top end in here, I would say. Maybe having more cards that just give the poison counter could be decent, too. Or at that point, more removal. But you guys saw how hard it was to actually get creatures in our opening hand. There's not many in here. Look, 17 creatures. Uh, builds like this do know how to operate with a few creatures. 
but once you start getting below like 16 creatures then it's getting really sketchy right like it's uh it's going to happen more and more often where your opening hand has no creatures and now you're in trouble a tough balance to be had here i don't know what i want to add or take out i'd say overall it performed about i it was it was a little back and forth wasn't it I would still consider it jank, but I also think it performed well enough to not change anything right now. If we revisit Simic Poison, I think we're going to want to completely overhaul it and try like a different route. But when I do overhaul it, I think I'm going to keep like Rot Priest and Hall Creeper and then see what else we could potentially have in the build as well. Guys, let me know what you would add or take out down in the comments. I'm not going to change anything here. I think Branch Blight Stalker I think I think I like the four of it's a little bit it's a little bit of a janky pick, I guess. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna keep all four. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I was back and forth on it, but um it's also uh, much more of a budget pick than contaminator too. Yeah, we're we're just gonna keep it as is. We're not gonna add any contaminators right now. Like I said, a little bit too expensive for what the deck list is trying to do, I would say. Okay, guys, enough rambling, huh? I thought I had more to say about the list, but no, overall, I kind of enjoyed it. I don't know if all four Enter the Enigma is actually necessary, by the way. I <laughs> somehow found more to talk about, right? We could go down to two of these, potentially go up a couple more protection spells. Actually, that would be pretty good. I'm doing that right now. Shore up. I can't believe how much protection we needed in hand at any given time. Shore up was already in the uh, honorable mentions. We're dropping a common and adding another common, so that's kind of important. When I change things at the end, I I like to try to keep it uh, consistent like that. Uh, shore up also works pretty well when you're pushing through extra damage. Untapping creatures also works relatively well uh, in certain uh, circumstances where you need to get a swing through, get some toxic through, but then have a surprise block or a surprise blocker, right? I actually really like that change. I still like the one of combat research too. I'm going to keep that. Uh, I still like all four uh, Aspirant's Ascent as well. Uh, also, with all like the different burn removal and uh, burn board wipes as well, the Ascent really does work out nicely. All right. Now, is that everything? Okay, now that's everything, right? <laughs> Guys, if you made it this far into the video for real, y'all are champions. I super duper appreciate you, and I will see you in the next video.